Hey guys, I'm back. I'm just responding to a couple of the comments. Um, geez, somehow we've gained 100 subscribers in a in a day, which is absolutely fucking spectacular. Um, so I'm, look, I'm just to keep the engagement going. I'm going to make an effort to um, respond to all the the comments. Right, the guys who are who have got constructive criticism, we really appreciate it. Um, yet you're 100% correct. The cables aren't exactly the same length. We we added a couple hundred millimeters in, um, you know, to to try and get them roughly the same but they're not exactly the same and that is not ideal so I totally agree with that um, one of the guys has um, mentioned that that they use 400 millimeter square copper bus bars um, and that we shouldn't be seeing a huge difference on the cable so today's video I'll cut to it shortly is going to be about that um, it, we always blame the, the cable length if it's not the cable length it could potentially be something else but we've we've grabbed a little bit of data uh, and, and and filmed the the imbalance so you guys tell us what you think Anyway, stay tuned, the video's coming. Someone has pointed out to us that we might we might be wrong about our um, about our bus bars being like the, the bus length causing voltage drop. So I figure, you know what, positive uh, sort of constructive criticism is a good thing. So if I'm wrong, I, yep, I want to hear it. So um, what we got is, um, let's just jump onto shelf one. So the feedback was that we shouldn't be getting any voltage drop over these cables, right? Man, that, that inverter is humming along. So that's a ball pump running on the batteries right now. We're pulling out 123 amps. We could go higher, but the problem is that it's a, it's a 10,000 VA. So 8,000 watts of 25 degrees Celsius. So it's probably 28 degrees out here at the moment. So that's pulling some fucking power out of these batteries, man. That other solar's not doing anything to help us at the moment, unfortunately. Let's, uh, let's let this thing draw down and see what happens. Alright, here we go. Um, we're at 53.34, 36.40 amps. Shelf one is at 53.2 at 45 amps. So that's what we see. Um, we see that one of the shelves will lose slightly more than the other ones. It's the one that's at the top. So the one with the shortest cables loses slightly less, well sorry, loses more, right? It, it, it has, generally has just slightly more current coming out of it than the other shelves. And they sort of tend to bounce backwards and forwards. I mean, it might not be, you know, it might not be the cables. Um, it may very well be the, um, it may very well be the actual BMSs themselves. Like it might just be, fundamental differences in the BMSs. Um, we've always put it down to just the the length of the cable being the issue, um, but maybe we've got to look at it a little bit further. One thing I haven't done for a while, and it's part of the reason why these screws are loose, um, is get in there and tighten those things up, but because of how fucking tight that is in there, it's actually really difficult to get that cover out. But I generally, like once a year, I try and come in here and as these things uh, expand and contract over winter, I found a couple of times I've found some loose nuts in here. Um, I usually come in here and look over it with my infrared camera to make sure that they're all sort of okay. This thing is still punching out. So it's only 126 amps, right? It, it sounds scary. Well, you know, you think about it in wattage, it sounds scary, but in amps, it's nothing. Cold as. I need to get in here with the duster, don't I? All right, let's have a look. Um, where are we at? So 53, which one's that? Let's go shelf one. So that's the top shelf. Is it 52.89? Pulling out 44 amps. Shelf three. Is it 53.04? Pulling out 35 amps. So that's what we see. So, um, so old matey said that um, if we're using, uh, that when he uses copper bus bars, he's not seeing it. Um, I, yeah, I reckon we copper bus bars would be way better than using cables. Um, so if I can find some, maybe we'll convert over to it. But at the minute, uh, that's what we're seeing. So if you've got, if you reckon it's something else, I mean, I, out of the list of things it could potentially be, what, what are we looking at here? Um, maybe, shit, they could use tighten up. But that's the one that's losing all the amps, right? So it's not impedance of that joint. Um, you know that one's rigid so you'd expect that one's making better contact this one would have a point of impedance so 
that means that we would see that heating up and probably less current coming out of this um, and more current coming out of one of the other ones. So let's flip it. Um, I'll shut the load down so poor old spars need to clean but it's not happening today. So that should take our load off. Taking a sweet old time to update, isn't it? There it is, load's gone. Uh, that's fine, well, that one doesn't need to be on, does it? So that brings on our 250, 250 watt is the ones down the side of the house, they're the ones that are going to make the bulk of the power. So once these things fire up, booting, booting. What have we got here? That one's on, that one's not, what's going on there? Who knows? I'll look into that. Oh, that's unplugged at the moment. Alright, my bad. And then, forgive the mess in my shed, guys. I do fabrication work in here as well. It's a bit of a mess. Turn on all the AC coupled solar. That'll all boot up now. There we go. So, battery's charging. Five kilowatts coming in. What does that mean for our shelves? So, I think we're on shelf three at the moment. 53.29 is getting 10 amps in. And this one's still lagging behind. Oh, did you hear that? That's something. That's weird. I haven't heard that for a long time. Let me put my phone down. That's really interesting. I'm not sure what causes that. Um, like when we do it with when we hear that noise coming out of the um, oh, I've got to do an upgrade. I'm not doing that right now. Sorry, champ. 245 on AC out. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what's causing that noise. Um, when it happens on the uh, Quattro 2 in the caravan, it's usually we found it's usually because the, the inverters are default at 230 volts, and if you put the self consumption. Um, yeah, like either ESS or the self-consumption hub on it, um, it's got to get in sync with the grid. And if your inverter's at 230 and it, you know, it's trying to get in, in sync with the 240 volt grid, you'll hear that noise a little bit. Um, but I'm not attached to anything else, so I'm not, I assume it's got something to do with the AC coupled solar over there. So, you know, we got a couple of kilowatts coming in from those. Anyway. Let's disconnect, remove the, I don't know what device was disconnected, but it can go away now. Um, Alright, so we've got a phantom load somewhere, clearly. That means one of the PV inverters is not uh, not speaking when it should be. That's what that noise is. So I've got a network issue between this and that. That's interesting. And half those inverters are turned back off. Ah, that's not what we're here for anyway. Let's, let's get to the bottom of this. Um, I'll just so what we should so we've got 23.51 23.54 so that, uh, that bottom bottom pack is still sitting slightly higher so maybe is it is it just that the bottom pack is in better shape because it's newer is it maybe that some of the cells or do we have an imbalance so we've got we're bouncing between 19 and 20, 24 amps. Shelf one. See, 19 and 24, and this one's going 25 and 28. And the only difference is those cables are shorter. And those ones are longer. So I thought it was an impedance thing, to be honest with you. But interested to hear what you got to say if that's if you think it's something else chuck it in the comments um, I would have thought it's like a shunt that you can measure it at like low hang on I'm just going to change hands on the camera you could measure it low impedance when there's no current going through it but when you as soon as you start to put current onto it what used to have you know almost immeasurable impedance might suddenly have impedance um, would be my interpretation it's worrying me a little bit huh. I better troubleshoot that, eh? Cycling in and out, and I wasn't seeing the frequency change here, so it's not a frequency sh shifting thing, is it? 
Or is it, maybe? 50.1? Nah. Uh, 247 is pretty high voltage, isn't it? I can shut them down. That's alright, that's not what we're here to make a video about. I'll, um, I'll figure what that problem is out and then probably make a video about that as well. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. This top shelf appears to us to be... Um, the shorter cable means that this one either discharges more and also gets more of the charged current. Um, the only other thing could be is that that is actually the original shelf um, and maybe there is something different about it. There's only a week difference between this one going in and this one going in. That one came in like two weeks later. Um, so we always put it down to it's got to be the cable length because um, we pretty consistently see that one is always at the highest sock state. This one's always at the lowest. From the Victron's perspective, this is all that matters. Whatever voltage it sees is, is what's important. Um, but otherwise, like I come in here and I check the JK BMSs regularly. So if you think it's something else, what do you think it is? And chuck it in the comments below. Um, if there's something I'm not checking that you think I should, you know, throw, it, throw it down the bottom. Uh, we're still trying to grow the channel, so if, uh, you know, if you're not subscribed and you like seeing what we're doing, keep it in like, keep putting comments in the bottom. Um, I make an effort to respond to every single one. Uh, and all your feedback is valid. Um, yeah, if you think if you think we should do something differently, tell us, and, uh, and and we're very likely to listen. Anyway, thanks for that. I'll see you in the next one.